In this tutorial, we're going to be optimizing images for your website. We'll be using sliders, and I'm going to show you where to get audio and video for free. This is tutorial number 11, Imagery Part 2. Hi, I'm Candace. Welcome to Websites Made Easy with Candace. The tutorials in this series are based on the chapters of my book, I Need a Website, What Do I Do Now? If you'd like to follow along, you can purchase my book on Amazon.com. It's always best to compress your images before you put them on your website. Images reduce site speed significantly, especially on mobile devices. The average web page is 1.28 megabytes in size, and 61% of that is used by images. Always use an image of good quality, because when you optimize or compress the image, the change will not be significant. Photos should be JPEG format at 72 dpi dots per inch, and the reduction of the size should be about 70 to 80 percent. Shortpixel.com is my favorite compressor and it's really easy to use. So let's optimize and compress an image. Go to Flickr.com, we're going to find an image and keeping with our uh, bird motif, let's look for some unusual bird photos. Remember, we want to go over to any license and we want to go to no known copyright restrictions. And let's browse and see what birds we want to use. Here's one you do not want to use. You see the, the uh, resolution is not that good. And if you compress it, it's just going to get blurrier. So make sure that you find an image that's nice and sharp. Here's one here. Oh, that's beautiful. Uh, it is in public domain. Don't forget to credit the author. And let's download it, the original size. And there it is. Now let's go to shortpixel.com. You can see here's the original picture. And when it was optimized, what it looks like. You can barely tell. And they optimized it 77%. So let's compress an image. You're going to drop your file into this box. Here we go. And now it's uploading it. And it's compressed it. The original file was 2.3 megabytes and they reduced it to 0.1 megabyte. You hit the I here and you can see what it looks like, what the compression. So this is the original and this is compressed. Not a whole lot of change, which is exactly what you want. So then you're going to download it, and there's your picture that you can use. Here are some other recommended compression tools, and they all work pretty much the same way. You simply drag your image into the box and then wait for the compression. Check them out and see what works for you. One other thing to consider, don't put text inside images. Text is not searchable when it's embedded in an image. Often image titles are in bold or in italics, and this is going to slow down your web page speed. So stick to regular print. And finally, just remember to use the right format, which is JPEG. You can use PNG. It's a better resolution, but it's a much bigger file, and it's going to reduce your page speed. Sliders are slideshows on your website. They're very popular, easy to use, and they take up less space than a video. Sliders can be anywhere on your web page, but most often they're on the top, above the fold. That's the portion that you see before you scroll down. 
Above the fold is a newspaper term. Newspapers are folded in half, and the upper portion that you see is where the most important information is located. Sliders are apps, and all platforms offer sliders. They make it easy to showcase products and services without taking up space on the page. Florida Fish and Wildlife Conservation Commission has a slider on their homepage. It's on a loop. It will continue automatically. If you want to manually continue the slides, you can just hit the little arrows. And isn't that a wonderful picture? Here's another way in which sliders can be used. Popular Mechanics has a gallery of 25 photos of exotic birds. In this slider you advance to separate pages, images of the birds, but also give you some descriptions, some details about them. This particular slider you can go at your own pace, which is great. You can go forward or back. You are in control. The nice thing about sliders is it's interactive. It gets your viewer to interact with your website. You always want to know what's next. And what that does is it keeps you on that website a little bit longer. The American Bird Conservancy has three sliders on their homepage, and they're all in the same line. They divide it up into three areas. Get informed, you can take a look at pictures there. Conservation, if you're involved in conservation, or take action. You can click on the image and it'll take you to another page and it'll give you information about the bird and if you want to donate. Video marketing is here. It's one of the fastest growing and most in demand forms of marketing today. People love videos. It's very engaging and your viewer is distracted by movement so they're going to stay on your website longer. Videos get attention. That's why they're so popular. It's so hard to turn away. It piques your interest. It explains what you do, like building a pizza from scratch. It shows your products. Take a look at that cake. Doesn't it look tasty? You can invite your viewer into your establishment. They become more familiar with you and your business. And you can introduce your team. Pictures aren't as real as videos. Some website builders are more receptive to video than others. WordPress has templates that support videos and plugins for add-ons. Wix, Squarespace, and Shopify also support video edition. There are many pros for using video. It helps viewers better understand what you do, and people will stay longer on your site if they are engaged. 46% of people who watch take action and 80% will recall the video a month later. You're going to stand out from your competition, and the video is going to boost your sales. Keep in mind that one-third of the time spent online is watching videos. Mobile users much prefer videos to reading text. But there can be a downside. There are many videos that are free, but if you want to purchase a video, it can get expensive. It requires more expertise. You might find a great video that's free, but it's too big, so it's going to have to be compressed. You also have to make sure that your video interests your target market. If it doesn't, they bounce they're gone and we all know Google doesn't like that. It's also annoying if the video starts automatically. 
never do that. No one wants a video to start automatically. They want to start it themselves. They want to have that choice. And finally, load time can be affected. Here again, the video will have to be compressed. And we'll be discussing video compression at the end of this tutorial. Homemade videos are the best. They personalize your website. You seem real and people feel like they know you. But you have to be aware of the pitfalls because there are problems with custom videos. The files are large and they've got to be compressed to six megabytes or less. And they have to be converted to an MP4 file and you're going to need a video editor in order to do that. If you have a Mac, iMovie is free. It comes with your Mac. It's easy to use and offers a lot of options. It's what I use to make my YouTube videos. Movie Maker was Windows pre-installed free video editing software. It's on many Windows computers. And while it's no longer pre-installed as of Windows 8, you can still download it. Of course, you can always go to Adobe. They have several editors, but they will cost you. And if you need help, you can always go on YouTube. For those of you who don't want to tackle that, you can hire a video editor. Fiverr.com and Upwork.com. Rates are hourly and they range anywhere from $10 to $50 an hour. But you can do this yourself. You can do a short video on your iPhone. Give it a try. Here are some points to remember about videos. They should be relevant. They should have a purpose. If not, videos are a distraction and they're going to confuse your viewer and they're going to leave. Number two, they should reinforce your message. Number three, don't let the video interfere with readability. If the video is dark, use white text. If it's light, use dark text. Number four, make the video short. Videos affect loading time. The files are large, so it should be only five to 10 seconds. And remember, it's got to be six megabytes or less. Number five, never add audio to your video. In short, it's annoying. If you purchase a video with sound, mute it. Music is okay if it's on a low volume. And nature sounds as well, like birds tweeting or waves crashing to the shore. But make sure they're on a low volume. Human voices interrupt the train of thought. They're distracting. You want them to enjoy your website so they will stay. And number six, don't show the video controls. You might think it looks really cool, but it isn't. There's lots of free video available online and the quality is really very good. Many stock video websites will charge a subscription fee and you can go that route, but you don't need to because there's so much available for you. Do keep in mind when you choose a clip, try not to get one that has identifiable people in it because even though today it's on public domain, in the future it might not be and there may be copyright issues. So let's go to pixabay.com and get a free video. We'll search for birds again. Let's search for sparrows. Something you'll notice with Pixabay and some of the other sites too, that they will have sponsored images above the free images. So don't get confused. Shutterstock images are not for free. The ones underneath, and oftentimes if you get down to the bottom, they'll have some more uh, paid images. Now the type of image we're looking for are videos, and we want free videos. So here we go. These are Shutterstock. They cost. Let's go down and here we have our sparrows. Let's take a look at this one. As you can see, most videos do not come with sound. That enables you to add whatever you want. If you want to talk about the video or if you want to add 
a little music, you can do that without interruption. We notice that the license is free for commercial use, no attribution required. Do remember, here is the author, SCYM. We do want to credit the author. Let's do a free download. Here are the controls. If you move your cursor off, you won't see it. So let's see. It's only 10 seconds. It's in good clarity. What we'll do later is when I do sound, I'll show you how to add some sound to this. So now let's try doing the same thing on Pixel.com. Pixel also has some very good videos for free. Let's take um, a goldfinch this time. Let's see what they have for goldfinches. Up here we're going to go for videos. And you can see all of these are paid. Only these two are free. Let's take a look at this one. All right, so these are goldfinches and they're eating at a, uh, a bird feeder. You hear a little bit of sound on this one. So let's look at some information on this. It is free to use, no attribution required. So let's download. Let's download the original. And this is our download. Here are some free video sites. Check them out. You'll be amazed at the quality you can get for free. If you're using iMovie or Movie Maker, most of your files will be compressed. But if you're not, or if the files have not been compressed enough, you can go online and use a video compressor. This one is freeconvert.com. It's easy. It's so simple. You just drop your files in and you go down and we want to reduce, we're looking at this file size, it's 25.81 and we want to get around 6 megabytes. So we want to take it down about 80%. So it won't affect our load time on our website that much. So let's compress. And now you just have to sit a minute and let it do its magic. It will upload, then it will compress. Okay, we're ready. So let's download the file. There we have it. Let's move it in. And let's okay not bad and we have reduced the file 80 percent it's why it's so important that you start off with a really good file and look at that head of the sparrow here you still get a lot of definition around the eyes and the beak so i'm satisfied with it i'm very happy with it and i can use it on my website let's take the new file and see how many megabytes it has so we're going to compress another video and I'll just drag the new one in and just see what size. And there it is, 6.3 megabytes. We have reduced it from 25 to a little over 6. That saves so much load time on our website. It's worth it. Brian and Jeffrey Eisenberg are pioneers in online marketing. Sound is invasive, intrusive, and irresistible. The accepted thought on using sound on websites has always been a resounding no. But times are changing. People remember sound, and when something is remembered, it's a very good marketing tool. iMovie and Movie Maker are easy to use video and audio programs. If you want audio clips for free, you can go to freesound.org and I'll show you how we're going to put sound to our bird video. We had the picture of the two goldfinches on the bird feeder. So let's see if we can find a sound to go along with that. 
And here we are. It's a lot of them. See the first one? It's too many of them. That's a whole flock. Let's see what this one is. Yeah, that's more like it. Okay, let's look in and see about this. All right, this is the creator. The work is licensed under Creative Commons. Just take a look. There is no copyright. The person associated with the work has deeded the work to public domain by waiving all their rights. So we don't have any problem. We're going to download this, make sure that we, we have the name of the creator. And this is our soundtrack. So now let's put the audio with the video. Pretty cool, huh? And it's so easy to do. Background music is still not recommended for websites because everybody has different taste in music. You want to appeal to the largest audience and you don't want your viewer leaving your site the minute they hear a banjo in the background. Of course, if you're a musician, disregard what I say. Of course you're going to use background music. But if you're not, don't use it. At least, not for now. Audio is tricky. But if it's used correctly, it's going to appeal to your target audience. And that's what it's all about anyway. We're just trying to get them interested. So now you've written your text and you have your images. Now you need to put them on your website page. Tutorial number 12 is alignment. And you'll be amazed at how simple it is and how many websites get it wrong. So it'll be out in a week. Check it out. And of course, it'll be fun. So Lulu and I'll see you next time.